What is going on gamers? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we're going to be reviewing the At Gaming Sega Genesis. This is a third party Sega Genesis mini console loaded with 81 games on board as well as a working Sega Genesis cartridge slot, two included controllers, and can be found between 30 and 50 US dollars depending on the market. Let's crack right into it. Alrighty guys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop, if you're new to the channel, this is where we do our unboxings as well as custom controller and PC builds and whatnot. I am going to be reviewing all seven of the licensed mini or retro consoles that were released from Nintendo, Sega, Sony, etc. So we're going to start with the Genesis here. This is actually a third party version. However, in my opinion, it is better than the actual Sega branded mini retro console. We are going to be reviewing that one on this channel as well. However, that console has a recommended MSRP of $80 and comes with 41 onboard games, exactly 20 more than the SNES Classic, but it does not have cartridge support for your own external physical Classic Sega Genesis cartridges. Now this has 81 built-in games. Instead of the three button controllers, it comes with the six button controllers, which a lot of these games actually do utilize all six buttons. And you can use your external cartridges, not to mention the console itself is actually smaller. So if that's, you know, if that's important to you, a small form factor for your desk or your entertainment center, that's something to keep in mind here. Now, this one I picked up for $25 at a BJ's wholesale club. I think Sam's was also carrying these for a while. And with these mini consoles, the price fluctuates a lot. Now, there's recommended MSRP. And then as supply goes up or down, as well as demand... All these third-party vendors, Amazon, Walmart, these wholesale clubs, wherever you might be able to find these bad boys, they will either dip or spike depending on that. I have seen these mini consoles go as low as like $15, $20, like the PlayStation 1 Classic when people just were dissatisfied with it. It was very low. And then also like the, the NES Classic, that thing is still well over $100 and that thing sold out like immediately as that was the first, the first one, to, uh, the first mini retro throwback console was the NES Classic, and then all of these six future consoles kind of followed suit. So this version here, I did mention is a third party. This is from At Games, and I will have this linked in the description below. You might have to buy an Amazon refurbished or used third party version from Amazon, but you can still find these uh, well under the $60 mark, so that is good. Now the packaging itself is pretty darn cheap, I'm not gonna lie, but you would, really wouldn't expect to get any laser cut foam or anything like that with one of these retro consoles. Would be nice, but it is what it is. Comes with two controllers, as most of these little retro consoles do, so you can play with a buddy, which I think is really cool because part of the appeal of these, in my opinion, is when you throw like a little house party or a get-together, get you can kind of just have this set up in the living room, and you'd be surprised how many people flock to these little mini consoles to play some of these throwback games, whether they're they grew up with the Sega Genesis or PlayStation 1, or they are a younger, or they're a younger crowd that just want to experience these uh, these old school 16-bit games and whatnot. You get your power adapter over here. This is a DC 9 volt with about a four and a half foot cable. You also get a four foot component cable right here. Now, a lot of newer TVs do not support component cables. They don't have the outputs for it, or the inputs, I should say. So you might have to get an HDMI adapter. I will have that link down there in the description uh, below as well, if you do pick this up and your TV doesn't support it. Now, one of the things I really do like about this console is it does have stereo sound. A lot of these throwback consoles will just have two plugs, one for video, one for mono or spliced audio. Now, this has stereo sound, which is cool. It's definitely a welcome addition. Now, as for the controllers, I did mention they are the six button here. And I gotta say, they actually feel pretty uh, true to the original as far as D-pad and the face buttons here. They are a little bit smaller than I remember because I did have the original six button controller growing up, uh, but they feel good. Buttons feel real clicky, good feedback on them. You have A, B, C, X, Y, and Z, a start button in the middle, and a uh, four-way D-pad that also has diagonal inputs as well for those fighting games. Now these are not USB, so you will not be able to plug them to the top of a tower to run your emulators like that. Or if you have a uh, mini retro Pi console, which by the way, I do have a tutorial on this channel, how to build one. And in my opinion, that is the best way to get into retro gaming because it's like a $35 single board computer that you can load literally 50 or more retro consoles on with like a library of 30,000 games. You can get Kodi on it for streaming um, movies and TV shows. And you can also fully customize it to look 
uh, with whatever theme or appearance you want. So you have a lot more controllability if you don't mind tweaking and hands-on building a little bit. But these little plug-and-play retro consoles can be a joy to play as well. So the actual console itself, very tiny, very light, and you have your two plugs for player one on two on one and two on the front. You have an on and off button right here, which actually depresses a red LED to indicate that it is on. And then you have the menu button, which when you want to go back to the menu to switch games or whatever, that is what you're going to press. You have a working uh, Sega Genesis cartridge slot here. Now, the licensed Genesis mini console has working flaps, but it doesn't go to anything. It just goes to a blank port. Um, as where this has a, a literal um, cartridge slot, which works for, in my experience and my research, about 90% of retro cartridges. So that's pretty cool. You have your video and left right audio and your nine volt plug on the back. You also have four rubberized anti-slip feet here on the bottom that do provide a pretty decent amount of grip. We're gonna go ahead and plug this into the TV right here. And I'm gonna walk you guys through what games come on board. We're gonna actually get into some of these games to see if there's any emulation glitches or errors. Alrighty guys, I did cut the lights so you guys can get a better view of the screen here. So you do have 81 built in games. Like I had mentioned, we're just gonna breeze through them real quick. You can press left and right to skip pages or up and down to select the individual games. You do have a little bit of album art there. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's not like a retro pie where you have a modern interface and then when you launch a game, it starts emulating in its uh, classic form. But you have Alex Kidd, Alien Storm, Altered Beast, that's a great game. Arrow Flash, Bonanza Brothers, Columns, Columns 3, Comic Zone, Crackdown, also a good game. Decap Attack. Uh, if you don't scroll to the next page, it's just going to loop around to the top. E-SWAT, Eternal Champs, Fatal Labyrinth, Flicky, Gain Ground, Golden Axe Series, which I... great games. Jewel Master... Kid Chameleon, Fantasy Star 3 and 2. I've heard these are great, but I actually have yet to play them. Restar, Shadow Dancer, Shinobi Tree, Sonic and Knuckles. Oh, it would not be a true Genesis without the iconic Sonic series. Had one of the best soundtracks to this day for retro gaming and just the gameplay. It was one of the fastest paced like uh, platformers ever. Sonic Spinball. Uh, Sonic the Sonic Hedgehog 1 and 2. So, quite a few uh, Sonic titles on here. That's good. The Ooze, Vector Man, also a great game. Virtua Fighter, good one. Shining Force series, very good. Super Thunder Blade, Adventures in the Park, Cross the Road, Jax P. Jax P, <laughs> interesting. Jewel Magic, Curling 2010. So, some of these titles here, like Curling, I mean, this is just a time waster, a filler, if you will. They could have easily left this out and put a better title on there, uh, like Earthworm Jim or something like that, but they're going to throw in some of these whack games on there, so like Chess, Memory, and Snake, but there are some good titles thrown in here as well. Wall Breaking, Bubble Master, Break the Fire Line, uh, Mahjong Solitaire, Warho Warehouse Keeper, Chess, Memory, and Snake. Again, just little filler titles. Air Hockey, Spider, Mr. Balls, that's what they used to call me back in high school. Cannon, Fight or Lose, Bottle Taps Race, Bomber, Checker, Skeleton Scale, Hexagonos, Whack a Wolf, or Schwack a Wolf, if you will, Mirror Mirror on the Wall, Am I the Cutest One of Them All, Panic Lift, Black Sheep, a little racist, but okay, Flash Memory, Brain Switch, Mega Brain Switch, Hidden Agenda, we all have one, Dinosaur Puzzle, Dominant Amber, Hide and Seek, Lost World Sudoku, Meat Loaf Rotation, <laughs> uh, Patero Spotting, Yawning Trice Triceratops, Mortal Kombat, here we go baby, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3, and then this is not a game, this is the about, if you want to read a little bit about the console. So I would say about half of the games on here are good titles. The rest of them are just some filler that you're probably never going to launch or whatever. But let's play some games that uh, are, are actually legitimately good. So we're going to go to Golden Axe 3 over here, which came out in 1994. I was three years old. Uh, to, to launch a game, you're going to press the start button. Using the A button doesn't do anything. Just press start. Golden Axe. So Golden Axe is still a really enjoyable game for me in 2021, to be completely 110% honest. Okay, so launching a game here, you see there's no custom bezels or anything. Like a lot of times it'll have a graphic of the game around the outside to get the game 
uh, to its native resolution. There's just a black border around there. There's not actual uh, custom bezels. Get wrecked, noob. Probably shouldn't have used my magic that early, but that's okay. Uh, you're going to pay for that, bud, just letting you know. You don't want it with the big dog, let me tell you. Double tap forward for sprint. You can kind of like charge into him a little bit with that. This guy. So again, you got to physically press the reset button on the top of the console when you're ready to go back to select a new game. That's pretty typical with most of these. Um, again, a uh, little plug for building a retro pie. You can just press the start and select button on your controller and bounce back into the menu without having to physically touch your... So again, this is the licensed version of this game. This isn't some third-party basement program title. This is the actual Sonic the Hedgehog title. And I gotta say, let me t tilt the mic towards the TV a little bit so you guys can pick up this soundtrack. It's so good. Do, 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 do. Boing. Oh, you little bastard. Let's get some speed, buddy. Let's go, little buddy. Like, the, something about this song still gets me pumped to this day. I'm 31 years old, and when I hear this song, I still get uh, a tickle in my nostalgia nether regions. Do, 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 do. Simpler time for gaming, boys. All right, I could spend all day playing this game, but I know you guys probably want to see a couple more of the titles play, so. Vector Man is also really fun. This one had some, like, really good 80s porn um, soundtrack as well. Call this track Getting Down to Business. All right, let's rock and roll. You don't want it with the big dog? What's good? Oh, you can get wrecked, noobs. Okay, I got wrecked. I got obliterated. All right, Mortal Kombat 3, and I think that should be good for the um, game demo section of this video. If you guys do want to see me play a specific title, just message me, and I will make a video, you know, commentating over it, giving my opinion on how it emulates on this mini console. I'm here to satisfy you guys. Well, we, we got to be either Scorpion or Sub-Zero. You guys know that for a fact. So this game does take advantage of all six buttons. Uh, this is one of those titles. I don't remember any of his combos or anything. But I do remember how to get my ass beat by a woman, apparently. Get Chris Brown. Come over here. Come here. Let me Ike Turner you real quick. Dang it. All right, so not a whole lot of controllability or customization of the user interface. As you can see, uh, a lot of these retro consoles let you change the background music, let you change the theme of the menu, stuff like that, or also play different versions of a game. So like the European, Japanese, or like the PAL version of a game, which might have a different frame rate, stuff like that. Uh, also, it didn't put on any bezels on the outside uh, to get it to the native aspect ratio that it's supposed to be at. It did look pretty good for being on a modern TV and whatnot. This TV is about six or seven years old, so it's not like one of the brand new 4K TVs, which do a lot of times have difficulty running emulated games. So a lot of times these little consoles will have a CRT mode that you can turn on, which will add scan lines and stuff like that to kind of make it look a little bit more true to the original. So also, there is no support for saving games, so that is unfortunate because you're not going to be able to finish some of those RPGs like Fantasy Star in one sitting. Uh, in a lot of these games, if you die or something, you can't just instantly hold down like start and a button and reload your save progress. So there is absolutely no saving games whatsoever. If you do have a cartridge installed, it will forego or skip that main menu and just boot straight into the cartridge game. Um, so if you wanted to go to the main menu, you'd have to remove that cartridge and whatnot. There is also no onboard low latency upscaler or any kind of CRTV options or anything like that. So controllability of this mini console is virtually non-existent. You just have the games on the main menu and you launch them and they play as the emulator is installed on the console. You cannot change anything. You cannot uh, buff resolution or frame rate. You cannot, like I said, save onboard um, controller profiles or remappings or anything that you can do with like a mini retro console. So, 
Um, that's not great. And also, I do have to say that only about 30 or 40 of those games were actual licensed Sega Genesis titles. A lot of those literally were just third party, not licensed, you know, little indie games that people program and stuff like the chess and the Mahjong and Sudoku and all that stuff. Um, those were not licensed Genesis titles. You can definitely tell which ones are the licensed Genesis titles like the uh, Eternal Sword, Mortal Kombat, Sonic, stuff like that. So there's a lot of filler titles on there. So when they say 81 titles, I mean, you're not going to play more than half those. It'd probably be about 30 or 40 titles that you're probably going to play on this. So for me, I would say if you can get this for under $30, it's not a bad buy. Uh, anything over that, I would have to say, look elsewhere, either buy a different out of the box plug and play retro console, or in my opinion, the best way to get into retro gaming, I say it all the time, is to build yourself a Raspberry Pi single board computer like this and install Retro Pi uh, emulation station on it. And you're able to upload eh, 50, 60 consoles and about 30,000 or more games, be able to save your games on here, have a desktop like user interface and a bunch of other features. I do like that it has two controllers. I did test them. I have played two player games on this thing. And the fact that it has support for like 90% of the Sega Genesis original cartridges, that's super cool. You can also buy a multi-pack cartridge. I'll have that linked in the description below as well. Amazon has one that's like 138 Genesis games on one cartridge. So that's a good way to plug that in there and get a ton more games. So overall, really cool. I think, you know, if you can find this thing for, I would say $35 or under, I would jump at it. I would get it. Anything above that, I would probably hold off until it drops in price. Um, but that's going to do it, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this little console, drop them in the comment section down there below. That is for you guys. Again, this is linked in the description below, um, as well as any other goodies I mentioned, like the like the component cable to HDMI adapter and the cartridge with the games on it and stuff like that. So if you enjoy this video, liking it does help it to get seen by more people, kind of ticks off the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more mini console reviews. I am going to be reviewing all of the uh, licensed mini flashback consoles in the near future, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.